You shall also stay in the Son of the Father. This is the promise that he has promised us, everlasting life. Verse 26, 1 Yochanan 2, 26. I have written this to you concerning. What does it mean concerning? I am concerned those who lead you astray. Do you know, I'm blown away. Read the Brit Hadashah again, cover to cover. Matthew to uh, Revelation, but especially the epistles. 80% of it is a warning because the Hebra Hebrews were drawing back. They were dealing with Hebraic drawbacks in those days. A Hebraic drawback is not someone who follows Torah. It's someone who exchanges Torah for Yeshua. Keeping Torah is not a Hebraic drawback. It is a way to shower him with your obedience. But not to exchange it for Yeshua. And we'll close with this. I'm going to show you something here. I mean, I could teach on this for five hours, but some of y'all still have those, those, those limited attention spans. So I don't want to go too further. <laughs> Pero I go just deep enough to make it a circumcision in the heart. Yochanan <laughs> chapter 8. Yochanan chapter 8. This stuff used to send Russia, Rav Shaul crying. Paul, he cried. And Miletus, when he and he said shalom to the elders in Miletus, he with tears. He said, in Ephesus, he met with the leaders at Ephesus who, drew, who went to Miletus to meet with Rav Shaul. And he said, I tell you this by the Ruach after my departure, ravening wolves will come in, not, uh, grievous wolves who will not spare the flock of Yahweh, and will teach them to deny the Master, Elohim who has bought them with his own blood. This stuff used to send Rashi crying to bed at night. Don't think, don't think this is an overcoming party. Those of you who are Messianic Nazarene Israelites, believe your Judah and Ephraim coming together, we are the ones. We're happy for what we got, but all the Hebraic drawbacks, and, and the longer you stay in this movement, you'll know the same people that I run into. And you find this very prevalent in home fellowships. Because anything goes. No, no one's in charge in a home. Everybody's like, is coffee ready? Does anybody have the, the donuts that have been dumped? It's in a home fellowship. Oh, there's just love and there's just it's a love feast. Fest, fest, feast. Nobody can criticize it. You can very close. You're on top of each other. Nobody say a cross word. You don't want to insult the host. Even if the host is telling you that Yeshua is really da Daffy Duck. Don't say anything because you're in his house. And, and you can't offend the host. But even though he's sitting there telling 20 innocent people that Yeshua is really Daffy Duck. <laughs> don't say anything because you're a guest in his home. See? And so home fellowships are in big danger. Whether you're in a home fellowship or in a prison ministry, if you are Yahweh's man for the hour carrying his message, you need to not just love, exhort, comfort, but you need to rebuke. That's why people don't like me. It's okay. I sometimes I don't like myself. It's okay. When I die, it's not going to be your mama that's going to be asking me if I was faithful. I'm not too smart. I have a very limited vocabulary and I have a very limited message. But I'm going to hear those words. Well done, thou good and faithful Amen. servant. Enter into the joy of your master. Because I don't, I don't just have to stand in the face of apostate Christendom, but how about apostate Judaism? I carry the grieving. That bothers me. That's why I do what I do. Rashul took us to bed with him every night. He was in tears in my lutus and says, after my departure, ravening wolves will come in, not sparing the flock. They'll deny the Elohim who bought them with his own blood. I'm glad you're saved. I'm glad you're a new believer in Messiah. But I, I won't rejoice till I see you at the finish line. 
Now, if I mean, what, what would happen if I would fall away? Boy, wouldn't Satan love that? How many thousands of people would fall away? If I opened the internet website, proving that Yeshua is not Yahweh or the Messiah, you think I get people to follow me? Sure I can. What happens if I fall away? I could. I could, sure I could. Darn right. And boy, would Satan love that to happen. Yochanan chapter 8. How many people tossed in Yeshua when Jim Baker fell? Or Jimmy Swagger? <laughs> I mean, people are people. They follow people. I follow people. I'm impressed with a good political speech by George. You know, I like that kind of thing. We are human beings. We're impressed by other human beings. Yochanan chapter 8, verse 16. I pray this pricks your heart so deeply that you will hold on for life. Because... That's what it is. You're holding on for life. Murph and I can tell you, we can go way back. People that, it's shocking. Shocking. There's a woman in the union, and I'm going to be very delicate here, just, just to keep you on guard. Just to keep you on guard. Avi Ben Mordechai, and he won't mind me saying this because he says it himself. He was a Jewish believer. He'll be here Tuesday night. Please be here. He had fallen away. And it wasn't until he had just about fallen away that he came back to his senses and didn't completely do apostasy. He, the yeah, Avi will tell you. You know what brought Avi back? Kabbalah. Kabbalah. Where he saw that Judaism always believed in the middle pillar of the three pillars, Bina, Chochmah, and um, Keter, uh, and the middle pillar, Keter, Tiferet, and Yisod, the, the beauty of Yahweh is Yeshua. That middle pillar was Yeshua. So when he saw that it was Jewish to believe in Yahweh's son, he came back. But he was this close. Can you imagine? If Satan would have gotten Avi ben Mordechai? Okay, Yochanan chapter 8, verse 16. We'll close with this. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Oh, there was one other scripture that was very powerful that I wanted to read to you. I'm going to get back. Would you allow me one more? Yeah, yeah. One plus one? Yeah. Two? Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. What does that mean? Like, what kind of sound? What is that? Ooh, is that yes or no? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Yochanan chapter 8, verse 16. But even I do not judge. My judgment is true. Because I am not alone in my judgment. I and and I ask all these people who say the Father became the Son, not the Father and the Son, dual powers in heaven, the greater and lesser Yahweh. No, no, no. The Father became the Son, not sent the Son. So I ask them all the time, how come this word and, Father and Son, Father and Son, Father and Son, how come everywhere in the brick of the shop, this Father and Son? They said, well, I have an answer for you. If you knew a little bit of Greek or Hebrew, you'd know the answer. This is a week ago. I still haven't gotten the answer. He's going to send me the answer. I'm still waiting for the answer. Verse 17. And in your Torah, notice they're following what? Torah. He's not talking about Sunday folks. He's talking about people that are what? Saying, not just I follow Torah, it's my Torah. My Torah. These are folks who have taken the Torah to their heart. Like all Yeshua's disciples, Talmud Deem, should take the Torah to their heart. He says, in your Torah it says, it has been written, the witness of two men is true. How many? Two. two men. I am one who witnesses of myself, John 8, 18, and the Father who sent me concern, concerning me. Hello? How many? So when Yeshua said, Yeshua said, here's Torah. You like Torah? Here's Torah. The Father is a witness. I'm a witness. One plus one equals two. So next time someone tells you that, oh, you just don't understand God, that the Father became the, became the Son, and it's Yeshua only, that Yeshua is the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, putting on different costumes, you take them right here, according to the Torah, it says you need two witnesses to testify a truth. And Yeshua says, I and the Father are two witnesses, not one. But they are echad. Because the Hebrew word Shema Yisrael 
Yahweh Elohinu, Yahweh Echad. Echad is a compound unity. A man shall leave his mother and father and take a wife, and the two shall become basar echad, or one flesh. That word echad is a compound plurality unity. The Hebrew word, if Yahweh was an absolute unity with no plurality of divinity, the Hebrew word would be yachid, not echad. The Shema is Shema Yeshua Yahweh Elohinu Yahweh Echad, not Yahweh Yachid. Every Israeli knows that. The difference between Echad and Yachid. So he said, Yeshua says, I am a witness, my father is a witness. If there's no duality of powers in the Echad, how can you have two witnesses? You only have one. Yeshua said, no. Me plus the father equals two witnesses. Hallelujah. Because you can't witness about yourself. Amen, somebody. Amen. I'm just warning you, this is the hot thing now. Oh, we don't, we don't deny Yeshua. We don't deny the Brit Kadashah. We just deny the fact that there, are, that, there are, that there is the son of Yahweh who is a power separate from Yahweh and yet part of Yahweh. Now, that's a mystery. How can you be separate from Yahweh and part of Yahweh? Ah, when we get to heaven, we'll find out. But that's what the scripture teaches. Go back to First Kifa, and I'll close with this. Did you, allow, you did allow me one more, right? Toiv. Toiv. First Kifa 4. Sorry about that. Second Kifa. See? Second Kifa, chapter 2. Okay, let's start with verse 20. For, uh, second Kifa. 2.20. For if after they have escaped the defilement of the world through the knowledge of the Master and Savior, Yahshua HaMoshiach, if they are again entangled in them and overcome, overcome error and the world, what does it mean to be overcome? You're no longer Israel. They fall away from being Yahweh's Israel. The latter end is worse than the first. Listen. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than having known it and turned from the set-apart command that was delivered to them. Notice, believing in Yeshua is considered a Torah command. You can't say you believe in the Torah and reject Yeshua. Believing in Yeshua is considered in 2 Kepha 2.22 a Torah command. Do you see that, Reuben? Let's read it again. It would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the set-apart command, Torah, delivered to them. Meaning it would have been better off if they would have stayed in church. Let's be honest. I can get letters and people are going to email me. I don't care. When I was celebrating Christmas and Easter, I knew Yeshua. I was preaching. I was on the radio. No one's going to tell me I wasn't saved. I was saved with a whole bunch of error around me. For them, the proverb has proved true. A dog returns to his own vomit, and a washed pig to the rolling in the mud. For them, let the proverb not prove true for you. Father, we thank you. We give you all the honor, Abba Yahweh. I pray, Father. Every, every eye closed, please. Father, I pray that I pray that those that are being led to the slaughter from our messianic brethren who were dogs and you cleaned them up. And they were pigs. You washed them. And they're now returning. And Father, we read in Ephraim 6, 4. It's impossible when those who fall away to renew them to repentance because they've put the Son of Yahweh to open chain. Have rech rechmanus on them, Father. Catch them before they fall. Send the prophet. Send the paper. 
it's in the bulletin send something so they would not fall and return to the mud or to the vomit oh father like you just like we rescued our brother Roberto Hallelujah. before he fell away father father I pray that your ruach would go to the ends of the earth even those who are confused and are seeking answers, Father, in the mud. Stop it now, Father. Arrest them right now. Father, send them a Damascus Road experience for those that have been ordained to life, Father. Send them a Damascus Road experience. They'll be knocked off, and Father, that they would say, why do you persecute me? And they would ask, who are you? Say, I'm Yeshua, whom you persecute. Oh, Father. Father, I pray, Father, that you would remove every lying tongue from the pulpits of, the move, of this movement. Yes. Remove them, Father, that your sheep would be protected. Yes. In Yeshua's name, have, have chesed on your sheep. Your fold. The sheep of your pasture. Everyone with a, a newsletter or an internet ministry, Father, is building their own kingdom, leading the sheep straight, taking Yeshua out of the equation. Father, you know what to do. If the judgment must begin at the house of Elohim, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, what shall be the end of those who obey not? The good news. Father, these, these lying, deceitful spirits and their teachers have come to remove the good, the good message of the good news and turn the good news into a lie. And the people of Israel are left with a letter of the law. Father, we know the letter kills, but the spirit of Torah not the spirit, the spirit of Torah gives life. Father, bring reversal to our movements. And Father, just as importantly, protect those who have been convicted and heard this message, that they will be faithful to the end. For whoever endures to the end will be delivered. So Father, we thank you that even now, during this last time, prophesied apostasy that your light we shine for. Protect, guard, and guide in Yahshua's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
so.